I'm Sarita Westra. And I'm Annalise Minhares. And we're from Tier Firme. Tier Firme is our collaborative effort, and we create artworks about the Texas Mexico border using textile techniques and installation. We really gravitate towards a minimal aesthetic, and we think a lot about ideas of landscape, identity, and bicultural aesthetics on the border. And another part of Tierra Firme is that we are our educators, so we teach about the border region of Texas through our education. To make cochineal ink, you need a few materials. Your cochineal bugs, these were purchased and ordered online. But you can actually harvest cochineal. You can find it in Dallas, San Antonio, and along the border regions. You need gum arabic. That's going to be your binder for making the ink and gives it the viscosity of ink and makes it attached to the paper. And we have alum. It is a mordant salt, and it helps the color also attached to the paper as well as brightens the colors. Would you like to introduce iron and citric acid? Sure! We have iron and will satin the color of cochineal, which will give it a darker purple grays. And citric acid will bleach or take color out of the ink. So it will create really bright pinks and reds and it'll create a nice star pattern on watercolor paper. I'm going to show you guys how to make an ink and then Annalise is going to add the additives as well as show you how to apply the ink onto paper. The recipe that we're following is you need about 10 grams of a natural plant material for every 100 milliliters of water plus 10 grams of gum arabic plus 2 grams of alum, your mordant. So I'm going to first start weighing out my my material, natural material, which is the cochineal bug. I'm gonna weigh out less than 10 grams just because cochineal is really strong. So I'm gonna go for four grams with cochineal. We're weighing out 100 milliliters of liquid here. So we're gonna follow our measuring cup. So we're gonna let it steep for a little bit. Annalise does like to keep the bugs in her inks because it adds this really interesting texture to her paintings on paper, mm -hmm. um, so you can do that. You can already see how dark and rich that color is. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and strain the bugs using our small strainer. Our next material is going to be the alum, but before we do the alum, Annalise is gonna show us what color does the cochineal produce without any chemicals at all. So I'm going to take a watercolor brush, and number 10, and Load it up with ink. We have some strips of watercolor paper right here. So I'm going to use this blank strip and put some dye on there. And I'm gonna do another wash on top of that, on half of it, so we can see how deep we can get that color. We kind of got this nice mauve with hints of purple and pink in there. Mm -hmm. And we got those little specks left over from some of the dye stuff that didn't get strained. So now we're gonna see what other colors we can get when we make this into an ink. So I'm gonna weigh out the alum, and we want two grams of alum. You don't wanna to put too much mordant into your inks. Too much mordant can deteriorate your fabrics when you're dyeing cloth, as well as your cotton papers. So two grams is what the recipe calls for. And then I'm gonna go ahead and mix it into our stock. This will be our ink, um, like the original mother ink, and then we will split it up into three different containers. So I'm going to go ahead and add. And you can see how much brighter immediately the ink starts to shift to this raspberry color. And then we're going to add in 10 grams of gum arabic, and that's our binder. When I'm looking and, and working with my materials, you really want to start identifying what's what by the consistency and the color. So a gum arabic kind of looks more like a flower, whereas like an alum powder looks like salt. So we're going to add in the gum arabic very slowly because it, it does like to stick to itself. And you want to add it in and stir and make sure you're getting rid of any clumps. Clumps will happen. 
So just stir, stir, stir. And this is what's helping our natural dye stock turn into an ink. Without the gum arabic, it's just a dye solution. So right here, we can already see the cochineal dye without any added chemicals is now kind of fading into this really nice pale lavender. Actually very lovely, but yeah. the thing about this is that if you make a painting and you don't have any of your additives, like alum and guarcum, it, it will fade in sunlight. Right, so we added all the necessary things to make sure if you had a painting and it was framed and it was in a house and it had sunlight or just your living room light, that these colors wouldn't fade. There's lots of pieces of art and weavings that exist with natural dyes on them that have sustained <laughs> color for hundreds of years. So mm -hmm. that's because they did the recipe correctly. I'm gonna load up my brush and this is Cochino with alum. So I'm gonna do a wash over this oil pastel that says alum. And the oil pastel just resists so we can see a little bit more. But yeah, that's a really nice bright magenta. So here is our original, and then here is our cochina with alum. So that's a really nice shift. Yeah, that's lovely. Let's do iron. Okay. Let's okay. Do it. So I'm just going to do a pinch, and then I'm going to stir and just see what I've got going. And I can see that getting darker. So I'm going to add. I want a little bit darker. So I'm you can add, add more if you need to. Okay. So I'm going to I'm going to give a generous pinch. <laughs> and maybe one more. Okay. Yeah, that's looking nice. I think we can go darker, don't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's go for it. For the demo, we can show how deep it can go. And again, the longer that the mordant sit, the darker your colors are going to get. Right. We can see that it's nice and dark, so I'm going to go ahead and do our sample. So I'll put a wash over. Ooh. And it's really nice and That's nice. deep purple. Yeah, that is nice. This one will age really prettily. Ooh. Hello. So now we'll do... Do you need more hands? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so we got OG, alum, and then iron. Looking pretty deep over here. So now we're gonna use citric acid. So for the citric acid, remember that one is the one that bleaches or pulls color away. So I'm gonna put a wash of our alum and cochineal. And does this work with the cochineal and iron? Well, it works on both, yes. Okay. So let's do both. And so one important thing to know if you're going to sprinkle the citric acid, which is like a salt texture, is that you want to do it while your ink is wet. So um, you don't brush it on, let it dry, and then put the citric acid. You want the ink to still be wet. We have a wet wash. And I'm going to sprinkle citric acid. And you see this a lot in watercolor painting when people just use a salt. And then I'll actually sprinkle a little on the iron at the end. And we'll, we can see what it does. I could probably do something really nice when it reacts with the iron. So you yeah. can already see this color shift, especially here on the one with iron. Wherever there's citric acid, it starts to really lean towards a very light pink. Mm -hmm. And so on this wash of coaching on alum with the citric acid, it's becoming this like bright, almost bubblegum pink. This I would do in a painting if I really wanted to sprinkle that pink in there mm -hmm. and just have really light areas. But this is a really dramatic shift from the iron. And so once this all dries and evaporates, we can go ahead and brush it off. This one as well, the citric acid with iron, if you take a really good look, it's, at, it's pulling away so much color that the, the background's starting to turn white. When you're natural dyeing cloth, a lot of different techniques would be, in substitution of citric acid, would just be adding lime juice mm -hmm. to cochineal. Annalise likes to use limes when she's painting. Just to bring the material back into the painting. So if we're making work about the border region, we're painting with 
the prickly pear cactus cochineal, and then we're also using an element like lime to pull color out of the painting, using material to talk about place. Yeah. And that's it. That's Cochineal Ink. That's Cochineal Ink. <laughs>